what a blessing it is um, to be part of the HSBN family. And because of that, to an extended family to all of you, it's such a, um, a blessing to be here today. It really, really is. And um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to get straight into the word if that's okay. My message is called From Desperation to Destination. Because if you've ever been desperate for Jesus and you have no other alternative, you have to have unstoppable faith to get where you need to go. Period. So I want to go to Luke 8, 43, and I'm going to talk to you uh, about the woman in the crowd uh, who had suffered for 12 years with a constant bleeding. And she could find no cure. So coming up behind, oh, don't take my water. I'm going to say, oh, I love you. I love that man. Praise. I said to him yesterday, just say my name because there's something. Carol, I was like, oh, Jesus. So <sighs> I almost fell out. So, um, okay. Sorry. Back to the word. Um, so she... <laughs> She had a constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. We know she spent all she had. She went everywhere. She tried everything. So coming up behind Jesus, because as we know, the Levitical law says she could not be out in public. She could not touch anyone. So what do you do? She comes up from behind. She sneaks up from behind because she knows she's not wanted. But she was determined I've got to get to where I'm going. So she comes up from behind him and she touches the fringe of his robe and immediately her bleeding stopped. Thank you, baby. And so who touched me? <laughs> so sorry. Gee, Dr. Baby, Jesus is still working on me, so... Um, okay, back to the word. Okay, so she, Jesus says, who touched me? And everyone denied it. And Peter said, master, this whole crowd is pressing up on you. And Jesus said, but someone deliberately touched me. She was deliberate in her actions because she was desperate. And he said, they deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out for me. And when the woman realized that she could not stay hidden because she wanted to be hidden, and I understand that because when you're not wanted, you want to become as small as possible so nobody can see you. You don't want to be um, noticed or anything because if you're noticed, then you're going to get hurt. So you hide. And she was used to hiding but she couldn't stay hidden from the master <laughs> and so she began to tremble and she fell to her knees in front of him now she can be in front of him because now she knows he loves her because he's departed something into her so she comes out from being hidden and stands in front of him. And the whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him. And that she had been immediately healed. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. You see, desperate times call for desperate measures. She was desperate. She was desperate enough to defy Levitical law. She was desperate enough to disregard what others thought of her. She was desperate enough to risk it all to get her healing. Now, I understand that because um, when I was born, my, my parents had to get married because um, my mother got pregnant with me, and it was the 60s. And so they got married, and uh, it was a very dysfunctional family. So she tried to pass me off as a preemie. So to do that, she didn't eat. She um, was a heavy smoker, sm heavy smoker. She was a heavy drinker. So when I was born, I had a lot of physical manifestations that came from that. I had a, a permanent neck injury where, um, I'm not going to get into it, but when I was 14, my head was all over here. I have a permanent curvature of my spine. I ha I'm misshapen in my collarbone. But the most uh, important one was this leg was completely turned in. 
and the foot was against my shin. So my whole life, I walked with my foot like this, and I would trip over my own foot. So I had a lot of broken bones because I fell all the time. And as a result of that, I, I never ran, I never played, nobody, you know, nobody's gonna call me on the, forget you being 90 pounds, honey. <laughs> nobody, it's like, <laughs> nobody wants Carol. It's like, oh God, can we get anybody but Carol? Because it's, you know, and uh, so I live like that. And people made a lot of fun of me because I had the facial de deformation. At one point, this side of my face was an inch and a half smaller than the other side. One eye was higher, one ear was higher. And I used to look in the mirror and say, what's it like to be pretty? What's it like not to have something thrown at you? I've actually had tomatoes and people uh, tripping me on purpose. So I know what this woman is talking about. I wanted to hide, not only because I was messed up, but because I have an alcoholic mother. I got a gambler of a father. One time, uh, the mafia came to our house with guns because my father owed him money for a gambling debt. And I was four, and I remember him pointing the gun right in my face and saying, you know, you have a really pretty little girl. It'd be a shame if something happened to her. You know, you don't forget things like that. You know, so I know I'm not wanted, I know I had to live with my grandmother and my uncle for the first year and a half because I had to wear special braces and I didn't have a hip socket and so on and so forth. So I'm saying all that to say when I accept Jesus and started reading that he healed people, I said, well, he healed everybody else. He's going to heal me. It wasn't a question. It was an assured to me. So... Every day I'd go to church and I'd say, is today the day? Is today the day? Is today the day? And I said, well, not today, but it's going to be tomorrow. And finally, I was saved for about a year and a half. And one Wednesday night, the Lord came into my room and he healed this leg. And I felt the bones popping into place. And the spirit of God came on me for hours. Hours, hours, hours. And finally, that's how my whole ministry started. I went to church and people could feel uh, heat coming off my legs. And then I give my testimony, people started getting healed. But that wasn't it. That wasn't it. I'm going to get to something in a minute. It's going to blow your socks off. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go to somebody else who's desperate. Luke 7:36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. And so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. And when a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. And then she knelt behind him, once again behind, at his feet weeping. And her tears fell on his feet. And she wiped them off with her hair. And then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. I understand that. Because God started healing my face after I had surgery when I was 14. So even though my, my foot was still messed up, by the time I'm like 16, now I'm, I'm looking kind of normal. You know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of cute, you know? <laughs> hey. All right, all I gotta say is there's something to being symmetrical that's attractive. <laughs> so I'm symmetrical, I'm good to go, okay? So, now, you have to remember, I'm born in Hollywood, okay? Born and raised in Hollywood. So now I'm, I'm 16, I'm running the streets of Hollywood, okay? Because my family doesn't care about me. So I'm, I'm running Hollywood, but you, I have seen some things. <laughs> I have seen some things. So I'm running Hollywood, and now, you know, guys are uh, paying attention to me, and, you know, so I'm paying attention to the, to the guys. And uh, um, so uh, I got kind of, uh, you know, I won't say I was a hoe. I will not say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I was never stupid. Let's just put it that way. 
but um, I, I, you know, all of a sudden I've got this freedom to do what I've always wanted to do, even though my leg is still upset. You know, you wear a maxi skirt, nobody's gonna know. So I'm dating and <sighs> sneaking into my friend's windows with cold duck, you know. And then their parents are checking me and I'm like, okay, you know, and like, don't hang out with that Carol. I did her funeral not too long ago, so that was funny. Uh, the mom that kicked me out. But, um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm going to bring it on. So, uh, you know, my, my father, we, they got divorced and my father's living in Hollywood and I'm living in Hollywood and, and uh, he caught me going into some interesting places. And um, I, I just, I didn't do right. Let's put it that way. So um, later on when I became a Christian, uh, I just thought, you know, every, you know, God forgives you. So I was engaged to a young man and I told him all the stuff that I had been through. And he promptly told me that I was not good enough for him. And then told everybody in church why it was not good enough for him. So now my, everything's exposed and everything. And I'm giving you this a reason. Because I know how this woman felt. All I wanted to do was kiss the feet of Jesus because he forgot, he forgave me. And, and these people didn't even want her to praise Jesus for what he delivered her from. Okay? There are some people that don't want you to praise Jesus no matter what he's done. And I'm going to tell you, he has done so much for me. So much for me. I had an abortion when I was 18. I was molested when I was four. Then later on when I became a Christian, I finally married a godly man. And um, I got cancer, uh, ovarian cancer. And they told me, you're not going to live. And then I thought, maybe it's because I had an abortion. Then they said, well, well you're going to live. We don't know how. It's a miracle, and I don't have time to, to tell you how that happened. But you probably won't have children. But I have two children. One of them's on HSBN. <laughs> My baby's on TV. So I know what this woman felt like, OK? I was told you're not good enough, first because I was physical, and then because it was spiritual. I wasn't good enough from jump, but Jesus. So I'm going to stop for one second because I have a song that goes with that. That's part of my thing, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Go ahead. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here. her face till at last she knelt before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster and I have come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my Oh, 
in my alabaster box I can't forget the way life used to be I was a prisoner to sin that had me bound without measure into a little treasure box I thought I had found until the day when Jesus came to me healed my soul with the wonder of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise Like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears or dry them with my In conclusion, back to the word. In conclusion, <laughs> desperate times determine desperate measures. My journey of unstoppable faith is that no one was going to stop me from getting to Jesus. Because he's the only one that was going to love me. He was the only one that was going to take care of me. He was the only one that valued me. Because he's Jesus. He's my Jesus. Now we know in Hebrews 11, faith is the reality of what we hope for and the evidence of things we can't see. And we know that that's the faith chapter. And it says it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to, than Cain. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child and thank God for that. Though she was barren and too old, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. It was by faith that Isaac was promised blessings for his son. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as it were dry land. And it was by faith that Israel marched around Jericho and those walls came tumbling down. But I'm going to go one step further. It was by faith that Elijah, Elisha left his plowing and ultimately asked and received a double portion. It was by faith that David felled a giant with one small stone. He had three, but it only took one. It was by faith that the blind received their sight. It was by faith that we received Jesus as our Savior. But I don't want us to stop there. I don't want to stop with just the basics because God has so much more for us. Don't stop believing for your children to come back and serve the Lord. Don't stop believing for your miracle. Keep moving. Keep moving. Be unstoppable until you touch the hem of that garment. 
and you receive what you can get from no one else. Let your desperation mean something. Use it to fuel your determination to believe God and you can remain in despair on your journey or you can go where God has designed you to go. I choose to keep moving in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.